Hallelujah. As I was listening to the pastor talk to the Peruvians today on Facebook, he was telling the people how God loves them. And we say this every Sunday in Sunday school class. And as I repeat this, I want you to repeat after me. Most of you know what I'm going to say. God loves me. I'm the apple of his eye. Because of that, I'm the head and not the tail. I am blessed and not cursed. I'm healthy and not sick. Everything I touch shall prosper. I am a lender and not a borrower. My family is blessed because of my position in Christ. My family is blessed because of my position in Christ. Woo! I am a child of God with all the benefits. In the precious name of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but every time I say that, I get excited. Because I serve a prosperous God tonight. How many knows that God owns cattle on a thousand hills? He owns the earth and the fullness thereof. Even though the economy might see be going down, but Jesus Christ made it possible that we can have prosperity, not just every now and then, but we can have it every day of our life. How many will agree with me tonight on that? Praise God. How many truly has been blessed in 2023? Come on now. I can remember a few years ago I was sick with COVID. Many people still facing that today. But Jesus always has the last word. He's got me and you here for a reason, and He wants to keep us prosperous. I love the verse, John, uh, 1 John 3, says, Beloved, everybody say, Beloved, I wish above all things that, you, that we prosper, be in health, even... Woo! As my soul prospers. I don't know about you, but that covers every aspect of our life. The pastor's been teaching on the book of Revelations. But I, I said, Lord, you sure that you want me to talk about prosperity? The church is still a victorious church. I don't care how much the crooked politicians and all the corruptness that's going on in the United States and the world not only here in this country, but it's going on all over the world. God knows everything that people are trying to do. How many believes that tonight? But I still believe what the Word of God says. If you want to be prosperous, one of the key things, even if, you've been, even if you want to be born again, you've got people in your family that needs to be born again, they have to believe 2,000 years ago, as we celebrate this time of year, what Jesus did, he emptied himself. The Word of God, it tells you in John, St. John, come on, he was the Word. In the beginning, he was the Word. He emptied himself and came down and was born of a virgin. And the world laughs at that. But I'm telling you, I believe every word of it. Come on now, if you're going to be saved, your loved ones are going to be saved. If America's going to be saved, they have to believe this book. Hallelujah. As I told the Sunday school class, I, we here at Rio East are very conservative. I'm on the far right. Come on now. I, want, I don't know about you, but I want to be on the far right. If God be for us, come on now. I don't have to be afraid of all this junk that's going on. How many know what I'm saying? God is still... Jesus said he's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and me. I know a lot of you had a hard time in the past few weeks or maybe this year. But I still tell you that God wants to make you a bigger blessing than you've ever been in the rest of this year and in 2024. 
God is not through with you. If He was, you wouldn't be here tonight. You're not here by accident. Come on now, can I hear an amen? God is not through with you. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. God wants to use every person in this building. And I thank you guys for coming tonight. I know, glory to God, it is a blessing to me to see people, elderly people, come walking in on canes on Sunday morning. It's a blessing to see them push their self into the, and we call this the house of God, but this is the house of God. But the Bible says, fail not to assemble yourself together as you see that day approaching. And praise God, I want to be obedient to the Word of God. The older I get, how many's getting older? Yeah. Boy, ain't it fun getting older? No. It's not. But I can have fun even though I'm getting older because Jesus wants to bless you and me. He wants to prosper you and everything. One of, the, one of the key things, I don't care if you're going to get anything from God, the number one thing is faith. Everybody say faith. You have to have faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the Word of, of God. This 66 books here, I was talking to a guy one time, I was talking about Route 66. He thought I was talking about the literal Route 66. I said, no, here is the Route 66, the 66 books of the Bible. This will keep you on the right, you won't get lost. <laughs> Come on now, you won't get lost if you stay on this route here. Now faith, and James talks about this, it says faith without works is what? Dead. Works without faith is what? Dead. So you have, to, you have to work your faith to get the promises of God. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith is what? Impossible to please Him. Come on now. How many wants to please Him tonight? Must believe, there's that word believe, that he is, and that he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That word, word diligently is an adverb, and it means working hard. You've got to take your faith and work it hard. Amen. If you want healings, you've got to take the word of God and use it and work it to get that healing that you want from God. What are you seeking God for tonight? It's the only way you're going to get it is by using the Word of God and believing what it says. Amen. If you're praying for your loved one, keep working the Scriptures in faith. Come on, I can't make something up. It's not my opinion that will get my people and my, my loved ones saved. How many knows what I'm talking about? It's what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. If you want to get healing, you've got to continue to fight for it. If you want to be blessed and you want a more anointing, you have to use a faith according to the Word of God. The Lord says in His Word, He has blessed me with all. Everybody say all. All blessings in where? In heavenly places. But i got to constantly fight for those blessings because we have an enemy called the devil, the principalities and powers that Past people in the past has fought with, and we're no different than that. Come on now. You're no different than your, your, your forefathers or whoever before us. They had to fight for it, and praise God, we're going to have to fight for it because we're living in the last days. And God said in His Word, you've got to fight the good fight of what? Of faith. If you want the promises of God, you've got to, you've got to get them down in your spirit. And stand on the Word of God. Every promise has a condition. And one of them is, you got to believe. I hear people, they ask for something. And when you ask for something, you have to believe it. You have to stand on what the Word of God says. All God's promises are yes, amen, and amen. He wants you to have it if you'll believe and seek for it according to His Word. That must these promise, a promise ha has a condition that must be met. One of the biggest words in the Bible is 
Pastor Dale said it Sunday morning. He's talking about hope. How many members? And it was strange. And they can tell you this for a fact. The song I played in Sam's Club, All my hope is in Jesus. All my yesterdays are gone. Woo! So it shows you how, I didn't know what he was going to preach on, but that shows you how the Lord knows what people need to hear. The word if, what a kind, is a kind of condition that we have to use. If we do certain things, God will do this. If I will pray, how many knows? A lot of people today, they want a revival. How many wants a revival? Come on now. How many got loved ones that want to see them saved? I want to tell you, it's going to cost you some time, and it's going to cost you some tears, and it's going to, oh, come on now, hallelujah, you've got to make, you got to push into this thing. Somebody, you're not here, somebody prayed for you to get saved. They agonized and fought against the demon powers that's pushing against our loved ones, that's pushing against this nation that we live in, that the enemy wants to destroy America. Well, we're in a great spiritual war tonight. Not only are we in a spiritual battle, but you, got, you might have sons, sons and daughters in the military. I don't know. But whether you believe it or not, America is in a war right now. They're being attacked in the Middle East. How many has been watching? This it is very serious. I heard right before I come to church, Venezuela is fighting in the, down in South America right now. War is breaking out. In these last days, there'll be wars and what? Rumors of wars. How many knows that I want my faith, I want to believe what God says, and I want to be ready because I'm listening. I don't know about you, but I'm listening for that trumpet to blow. In the book of Revelations, John said, Even so, Lord, come quickly. And it's been taught for the last 2,000 years. And how close are we to that time? Prosperity in the New Testament is talked about, it's spoke over 250 times. The different books, and I've got it all broke down there. Later on, I'll read you some of those, some of those, pro, those promises. The promises, 250 just in the New Testament, that in each book repeats what God promises for us that will believe. Prosperity is far more, far more than wealth. A lot of people, when you talk about prosperity, they talk, think you're talking about money. And that's part of it. If I take all your money away from you tonight, what could you do? You couldn't pay your bills. You'd probably be kicked out of your house. You'd probably be out on the street. How many knows? You can't buy gas. How many knows? And God knows that we need all those things. And he, not only does he want to furnish our needs, he wants to furnish things that we can support. What I'm talking about tonight, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ must continue to go forth all over this world. And he wants to prosper us throughout the rest of the time that we're a church, the body of Christ is here. Because the gospel is going to go forth. I don't care what people say. Praise God. The word of God is going to go forth. We're not... We're in a victorious, I'm in a victorious church. Come on, I'm in a victorious church. We're children of the light, not children of darkness. Prosperity is more than wealth. It is when all the people have the opportunity and freedom to thrive, fundamentally liberties and security for every individual. That's prosperity right there. Prosperity covers a lot of people today. I heard the prayer request here tonight. How many's got loved ones sick tonight? Come on now. So this is part of our the promises God has given us. He promises healing because what benefit did Jesus go to the whipping post? Come on now and put stripes on His back. This is a promise that we have, but we have to fight for it. Everybody says, I got to fight. Come on, you got to fight. You got to really believe this stuff. 
And when we come for prayer, believe and take hold of it. And don't let the enemy, don't let your feelings, hallelujah. You, how many knows when you believe God something, all hell tries to break loose. Every time you commit to pray, to have a prayer life, what happens? Things begin to happen that never happened before. How many ever made a commitment? Lord, I'm going to pray more. Lord, I'm going to study your word more. Come on now. Hallelujah. What happens? The enemy does not want you to be on fire for God. He does not want you to stay prayed up. He wants you to be down and out 24-7 if it's possible. But praise God, we don't have to be down and out. Even though we go through sicknesses, even though we go through trials and temptations, even though all the issues of... How many knows the devil plays mind games with me and you? But I have to fight. Everybody say, i got to fight. This is one of the promises. You've got to fight for, for what God has for us as believers. God is a restoring God. How many lost some stuff in the past few years? Come on now. How many lost some stuff? God tells me in His Word that He will restore what the canker worm has t destroyed. How many believes that tonight? Well, you got to believe what the Word of God, and you got to go back, hey, hey, Lord, your Word says that you will restore what the enemy has stole from me. Come on. He's out to steal your health every day of your life. Woo! But by His stripes... I am healed, and by His stripes, what? We were healed. Even though we get sick, that don't mean that God's not working because these bodies are not saved yet. So that's where my fight comes in. I have to fight for the health. I have to fight for this prosperity that the Word of God is saying. And we here at, Re at Rio East, I'm believing that we can be the healthiest bunch of believers, and we should be. Come on now. We should be seeing miracles if we as a body of Christ will get excited and believe what God says. We can have these promises of God believing, Lord, and say, Lord, this is what your word says. This is, this is not man's word. This is what God gives to man to, for us to go by. Amen? Woo! Somebody else said Hallelujah. If you can't get excited about the Word of God, you have no business getting excited about a song. Come on now. If you can jump up and down and shit for a song, you can sure jump up and down for the Word of God. Hallelujah. This is what's going to keep you. I'm not getting mad. I'm just getting excited. Whew. God is a restoring God. I'm believing. I still can't find it in the Word of God. You get too old to get healed. Or you get too sick to be healed. Come on now. God is a healing God. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm getting excited now, Brother Keith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The devil don't want you to shout on Wednesday night. He wants you to go out here like you come in, but I got news for him. Praise God. I want to be excited seven days a week, every day of my life. Not this when I come together with other believers. Because how much time do you spend here at Rio East? Come on. My Lord. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. Prosperity. Be thou strong. This is, I'm going to read you some paraphrasing out of the Old Testament here. Be thou strong and very courageous. It is day and time. You're going to have to be very strong and courageous because the enemy, is. you think he's going to leave you alone. You're badly mistaken. Next year is going to be hell like you've never seen before. I'll tell you that right now. But it's not going to affect me and you unless we let it. That's the key right there. But what you're seeing, what you're going to hear, it's not going to be very good. Because they say, well, things are going to get better. Uh-uh. No. Things are going to grow worse. 
because the body of Christ is not standing up, every, every person that belongs to Jesus Christ ought to be standing up and say, listen, we're not going to yield to this Babylonian system that's trying to destroy us. We're not going to do it. Praise God. Be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe and do according to all the law. Turn not from the right or to the left that thou mayest prosper with wheresoever thou goest. Thou shalt meditate. Everybody say meditate. Therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then shall, shall make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I don't know about you, I like prosperity and good success. I should have heard amen right there. I'm not going to let you sit around and be quiet tonight. You might as well get that in here. I'm going to get you involved. This is a, I, like, I don't like... Uh, what they call it, bench warmers. I don't want you to be a part of this. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord maketh the poor and maketh the rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from, from the dunghill. He sets them among princes and makes them inherit the throne of glory. 1 Samuel 2, 7 and 8 through 8. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in His ways that thou what? Mayest be prosper in all that He do, does and whosoever thou turnest thyself that you will be prosperous. I want every way I turn, I want to be prosperous. I don't care what it looks like, Brother Ken. I don't care what it feels like. Come on now. I've got the victory. I'm prosperous in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That don't mean I have a million dollars. Mention what I said. It's more than money. Come on now. It's health. It's victory. It's joy. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. i got to have that joy that comes from the throne of grace. And set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. Notice that inherit one of these days. Woo. Well, not one of these days. Right now, the word tells me he's called us, Brother Keith, to sit on his right hand in heavenly places. He has blessed me. Come on, to sit in heavenly places with him. That, that means I have the authority to decree His Word and to stand up on His promises. This is Old Testament. I'll get into the New Testament in a minute. Praise God. And keep charge of the Lord thy God to walk in His ways that thou mayest prosper, there's that word prosper again, in all that thou doest. I don't know about you, everything that you do, whether you still work, you're, where you work, you're a blessing to that company whether they believe it or not. T I told the company one time that I was working for, I said, you're blessed because I'm here. They thought I was crazy, but I knew what the Word of God says, and I would tell the employees, I had quiet 30-some men under me that worked for me, and they'd come out on Monday morning if you know coal miners, most of them, they had parties on the weekend. They come in with, the, oh, how many knows what I'm talking about? And they say, well, how are you this morning, York? I say, I am blessed. Oh, they said, oh, everybody's blessed. I said, no, not like me. I'm blessed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Hallelujah. Am I too loud? Praise God. If I'm not, turn me up a little louder. Praise God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and wheresoever thou turnest thyself. No matter where you go, whether you go to the north, the east, the south, or the west, wherever you go each day, you got to believe everywhere you put your feet, you got to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself. How many knows that covering 
Hallelujah. Not only cleanses you, but you plead the blood of Jesus from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Everywhere you put your feet, glory to God, is going to be blessed and keep you from harm. When you drive around Maryville this day and time now, Cole, you definitely need the covering of the blood of Jesus. Every day I get out, somebody across three lanes of traffic and switched right in front of you, and it shoes you. Somebody, an elderly person, I'm not putting them down, but they're, they're out there, they're shaking in all this traffic that they're not used to. And I'm telling you, without the blood of Jesus, you can end up in a very serious accident. And I recognize that, Brother Keith. When you get out here, you better have the blessings of God upon your life. You better be ready to leave here. Both riches and honor come, come of thee, that thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand is to make great, and to give strength to all. First Chronicles 29.12 is where it's found. A lot of this is paraphrasing now. The hand of God is upon all of them for good that, that seek Him. How many of us seek Him every day? If you're not seeking Him, you're messing up. You have to seek the Lord. You have to take time. Hallelujah. I heard some teaching the other day that Paul, Paul said he prayed without ceasing. And I, I don't know about you, that takes some practice right there. I mean, who knows what I'm talking about. Because you've got a lot, a lot of people are so busy. The holidays are coming up. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to get this ready. You got to get that ready. I'm telling you, but that's the reason we're celebrating this time of year what Jesus done. And you got to keep him in the center of our lives and, and recognize, seek him, and pray constantly. One of the things that made Paul successful, he was constantly praying. He said, I pray, pray without ceasing. Prayer, if you want to have a, a revival, go back and look at history of the church. Every great revival starts with people sacrificing, coming to a, a place, a, co a collective group, and getting down and crying out to the Lord. Hearing, I love to hear everybody praying at once. I don't know about you. That might just be me. I love to hear that sound. When I growed up in the hills of Kentucky, man, you're talking about some praying people. I was, you hear that sound, and that sound of people's voices crying out to God. And this, after a little while, you could hear that, and the Holy Ghost would stir, and people begin to cry out for the loved ones, and it wouldn't long, the church house would be full, and people would be coming, running to an altar to get saved. If it worked for them, praise God, it ought to work for us. Come on now. God is not a respecter of person. Come on now. Brother Ken, you all be saying amen, brother. Hallelujah. If, if they obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. <laughs> There's that word prosperity again. I don't know about you. I'd rather be prosperous than down and out. Because when I was growing up, we weren't very prosperous. I know what it means to be poor. My wife can tell you, I was with the poorest of the poor. And I tell you tonight, I'm so thankful tonight. Hallelujah. For Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. Without Him, I would be nothing. Because I had a grandmother, a Pentecostal Church of God grandmother. They say they would hear her. There was a little church house, Church of God, out on the riverbank up in, West, up in Kentucky, in the Tug Valley area, that they said they could hear her shouting, coming to church. And they would have a, a pot belly stove in, back years ago. And they would dance around that stove. And sometimes they'd reach around and I don't know how they would do it. It had to be a miracle of God that would walk around and hug that stove in, in faith, believe in God that that wouldn't hurt them. And they wouldn't get burnt. That to me, that is amazing. And they would begin to shout. And they would put their hair up in old bobby pins. How many knows what I'm talking about? They had long hair. It would usually come down below their waist right here. And they put it up in a, I call it a Pentecostal bun. They get to shouting. 
And that whiplash will begin to send bullets. <laughs> Come on now. Most people today, they're, they're letting people interfere with their praise and worship and shouting when we come together. And we should be having a party every time we come together in the body of Christ. We should be shouting. We should be rejoicing. We should be dancing before the Lord. Instead of letting human spirits, I'm not talking about demon spirits. I'm talking about human spirits keeping you from enjoying the presence of the Lord. Come on now. We think we've got to go by a certain program. I don't know about you. I want the program that the Holy Spirit wants to give us here at Rio East. And I know Pastor Dale and Pastor Teresa wants the same thing. Because when you let the Holy Ghost have His way, not my way, not your way, have His way, you'll begin to see things that we've never seen before. And I believe that tonight. God is a prosperous God. I love this when Job said, If you obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. I don't know about you. I want to spend the rest of my years in pleasure and prosperity. Come on now. Just because you're getting older don't mean you, you can't enjoy the ages that we're coming to. Amen. Fight for it. A lot of people want somebody else to fight for them. And we will. Come on now. Can I hear amen? We'll help fight for you. But you've got to help us out. I mean, I mean that's what I'm saying. You've got to fight for this. You've got to get in unity with it. You've got to get in unity with what God wants to do at Rio East. Man, I've got two or three pages of this stuff. Hallelujah. That was found in Job 36, 11. Blessed is a man. Oh, I love this. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of a sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the, his law do meditate day and night. Boy, that's a big saying, day and night. Whew. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in, in his season, and his leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. That's, this is the Old Testament. And a lot of people would say, a lot of people teach, probably in this, and I've heard it preached before, that Christians should be poor and down and out, sickly. We don't believe that. I don't believe it. It's a life in the pits of hell. You need to suffer. You're going to suffer. <laughs> I mean, no, you're going to suffer. You stay in this world. You're going to suffer. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, the Old Testament refers to the, under the law of Moses, but we reply, we are under a better what? A better covenant. And a greater and better promises in the New Testament. So if these things were promised under the old covenant, they are for us in a greater way in the new, under the new covenant. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 15, Paul argues that the glory and the blessings of the old covenant were not as great as those under the new covenant. So if men could get prosperity under the old, then it is certainly that that they can get it under the new. In Hebrews, Paul argues that the new covenant is a better testament established on better promises. Hebrews chapter, one, chapter 10, verse 1. So if mere shadow produces prosperity, how much more will the reality of the new covenant do the same? Apart from the argument there are plain promises in the New Testament concerning prosperity. Whatsoever thou desire when you pray. Oh my goodness. Whatsoever you desire when you pray. Isn't that, man, is that something right there? Whatever you desire. It didn't say whatever God desires. It says whatever you desire. When you pray, believe that you have 
received it. The Wymoth, 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 I can't pronounce it right. Translate it reads, grace upon grace. Oh, hallelujah. What is grace? His favor. I don't know about you. I want more of God's favor, more of God's grace. That grace with not only in prosperity, but fellowship with one another. Have the grace of God upon our lives. Have the grace of God in our families. How many understand what I'm saying? When you have God's grace, great things will happen in your life. Grace upon grace. Moffat translation. Grace after grace. Thus plainly shown that all the A, A, all of grace is not necessarily received at once. That's why we have people on different levels. One of you might be far above and beyond a lot of other people because that you worked your faith. Don't look down your nose if somebody else is getting more blessed than you are. Come on now. There's no room for competition in the body of Christ. Come on now. I'm not, come on. There's no, if you're blessed beyond measure, hallelujah. We ought to be shouting for one another. Come on now. When somebody has a better home, hallelujah. Come on. If somebody's doing a, making more money than you're making, praise God and rejoice with them. That way you can be blessed too. There's no room for competition in the body of Christ. Everybody has. God is not, he's not playing favorites. I mean, those what I'm talking about. It's up to you to grow in grace and understanding. It's up to you to go after prosperity. It's up to you to make that decision. How many knows? God will not make you do anything. God, how many did God make come to church here tonight? Nobody raised their hand. I'm telling you, if you're doing what you're doing to be recognized by people, you're wasting your time. I'm doing what I do because I love the Lord and because He's given me favor, because He allows me to teach His Word, because He has blessed me throughout 44 years. I can remember back in 1978 in August in a little church in May 1, West Virginia, in Assembly of God, I was lost. But because of His mercy, because of a praying grandmother, glory to God, because people begin to pray for us in that church, and it wasn't long. <laughs> I came, God used my oldest son, Robert. He was walk, I was walking through the yard, and he said, Dad, I want to go to church. Woo! And you know how kids get to you. Even though you might be a heathen at that time, come on. <laughs> Woo! God, how good God is. That He would use my son. And I said, Son, sure, we'll go to church if you want to go to church. And I didn't realize what I was getting into. Woo! But I never will forget because of Jesus. Whew, man. Everybody say, Jesus! Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Glory to God because of Jesus is the reason we're here tonight. Because we're celebrating this time of year is because of Jesus. Because of Jesus in 1978, He had mercy upon me. I don't know when you got saved. How many can remember the day or the night or the year that you got saved because of because of Jesus? It's the reason we're all here tonight. And that's the reason we're serving. That's the reason Pastor Dale is down in Peru preaching to those people down there. Come on now. Because of your giving. Whew. As we planted seeds here tonight. Those seeds, I'm believing, has been watered and they will give an increase. We might not see it in our lifetime. How many knows a lot of seeds don't come up when we want them to come up? <laughs> but praise God, you keep planting those seeds. You keep teaching. You keep being faithful. Glory to God, one of these days, those seeds are going to come up. Hallelujah. Whew, my Lord. We are promised today the fullness of God and the same power to do the work that Jesus did. Isn't that amazing? 
Since there are various degrees of power and faith in different believers, it proves there are also varying degrees of grace received from God. Each one of us it varies in different gifts. You might be able to do something I can't do. A lot of you have favor. You're natural, you're natural talkers. That's Brother Keith over a man. He can talk to anybody. He has that gift. Come on now. How many knows? These people have that type of gift. And he's good at it. Amen. He'll, he sees somebody coming in at the church. He's like a dog on a bone. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing. Woo. Hallelujah. Recognize the gifts that surround us and say thank God for people like Keith. Thank God for people like Ken and and Rose and all of you here tonight. Thank God for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Each one of you are precious in the sights of God. Hallelujah. He's got his eye (laughs) upon you tonight because you're here. These nights like this will be recognized by the Lord in eternity. Praise God. Nearly 90 90 times in the New Testament alone, an appeal is made to readers to believe what is written. As if everything was simple enough to understand, if men want to understand and believe, in fact, not once in either testament did any speaker or writer leave the impression that anything God said was hard to understand. There's no reason that we cannot understand the Word of God. In either testament, if men would simply believe, everybody simply believe, simply believe, everybody say believe. Come on, I told you you're going to participate tonight. You're not going to sit there. There's too many of us sit around like a knot on the log. Come on now. And don't get involved. Church, you got to get involved. Amen. Simply believe what God said, the only hint of misunderstanding on the behalf of anyone is the connection with those who do not want to believe and obey the gospel. Even a child can believe the gospel and understand it. Jesus taught that if only because of the willfulness of men not to believe, that is what was hard to understand. In other words, some do not want to understand. Come on now. How many have met people like that? They don't want to understand. I have met people, they want you to do all the believing and all the praying for them. Come on now. (laughs) That might work for a baby. Right? That works for new converts. It worked for me when I was a new convert. But I learned as older I get, it don't work that way. I had to do the believing myself, and I had to seek God for myself, and I had to stand on the Word of God for myself. I can't stand on the Word of God for Debbie, and she can't stand on the Word of God for me. We all got to come to maturity and believe. Anyone is connected who's those who did not want to believe and obey the gospel. Jesus taught that only because of the willfulness of men not to believe that it's hard to understand. In other words, some do not want to understand. Those who do not understand without exception. Peter speaks of unlearned and unstable. I mean, no, we're in a world, and it's surprising to me how many people unlearned and unstable in this country. And it should not be that way. The gospel is going forth, but because of corruption in, a, in our school system, here in Alcoa and Maryville, my God, you ought to hear some Rose is telling me the stuff that's going on in grade school, having witchcraft and, and fixing up potion, po, potions, is that what you said? Believing in witchcraft, dress, dressing up as ancient gods, how corrupt and evil that is against everything that America stands for. We were established upon the Word of God because of the Judeo-Christian ethics that we believe. 
and this country was established upon, and praise God, I believe that the United States of America is not completely lost yet. We still have a people, remnant of people, that will continue to stand up, and we see it happening all over, but we as, you say, what difference can I make? You're a very powerful people. If you're born again, you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you have great authority. How many knows what I'm saying tonight? And you've got to see yourself, not what I'm saying, but what the Word of God says you are. Everybody say, I am prosperous. I am victorious in Jesus Christ because of His blood that I received to whenever it was. Because of His blood, because He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He's not coming back to this world as a baby. <laughs> he's already done that once. But oh my goodness, when He comes back, He's coming back with the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And the next greatest event that's going to happen, it's not going to be a secret. It's going to shake the universe. There's going to be a trumpet. Just get this in your imagination right now. That when that trumpet blows, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now that's going to take something for thousands of years that people have died in Christ Jesus. You talking about a shakening. You talk about, I believe the whole universe will shake and quake when that takes place. That's me. I'm, that's my imagination. It's not going to be a quiet little thing. It's going to be, the world's going to shake and quake. And people's going to have, you talking about a time of confusion. When they see their loved ones that's been telling them, listen to me, please get right with Jesus. You're telling your loved ones, they know where you stand with Christ and they still rebel against you. I hope and pray before Jesus comes, they, every one of your loved ones get right with Jesus. Don't give up on them. I've been praying for this grandson. We're going to Arkansas, see, graduate out of John 3.16 ministry. That is a ministry for drug addicts and alcoholics, a Bible-based, believing, deliverance place that he's graduating this coming Sunday. Hallelujah. We've been praying for him. He's 27 years old, 28 years old. So 28 years we've been praying for him. And he finally gets right. Oh, hallelujah. So don't give up. Praise God. Pride, willfulness, and rebellion against what is written are causes of the Bible being hard to understand. The hard part then is not understanding with the mind, but the willing to obey what it does not what he does not want to obey. If a person could not understand the truth, he could not reject it. A lot of people know they once knew the Lord. A lot of people teach against this, but I believe a person can turn their back upon the Lord and go back into the, the life they once lived and cause them to be lost. You're not eternity secure. You have to stay under the conditions of the Word of God. I have to have God, I ask, please give me a repentant heart. How many knows what I'm saying? You know, because we all have faults that we probably don't see. We all probably have habits that we need to get broke in our lives. A lot of us, we don't want to. Come on now. A lot of us are hard-headed. Come on now. This, this is what I want. <laughs> this is what I want to do. Come on. But we have to line ourselves up, Patty, with the Word of God. Amen. Pride and willfulness and rebellion against what is written are the causes of the Bible hard to understand. There is no excuse for anyone to misunderstand God's Word. Hit God's Word if He wills. Like a child accept the Bible for what it says and be honest enough to consecrate himself to obey. Is it easy to obey God sometimes? 
Come on. How many knows? Most of us are inverted. Come on now. Who's inverted in here? How many knows what I'm talking about? It's hard for you to approach somebody. It's hard for you to witness to somebody. Come on now. How many knows what I'm saying? You know, so God, God wants to, ch- you say, that's just me. Well, God wants to change you and me. Does that make sense? He wants us to be more friendlier. We all to be the friendliest church in Maryville, Tennessee, in Alcoa, in Blount County. Hallelujah. When I first come to Rio, it was one of the friendliest churches. People loved people. They made you feel welcome. We need to stay that way. We need to welcome everybody that walks through those doors, no matter what they look like, no matter what color they are. It don't make no difference. Jesus is not a respecter of persons, and neither should we be. you got to have the love for people. It burns me up. People say, we love you, and next thing you know, they're gone. Come on now, I'm just telling you the truth. That kind of blunt bl- <laughs> That kind of boggles my mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we don't need, we, don't, we cannot be that way. We have to be true blue, you know, believers in what God's saying. Oh, my goodness. I've got two minutes left, and i still got three pages. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read. I've got two minutes. I'll quit right there. I believe I've said enough. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed this. I know God is for, if God be for us, come on now, if God be for us, who can be against us? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengtheneth me. He has given me and you the victory tonight. Let's all stand if you would. Hallelujah. Sister Teresa, will you come and stand in? Some of you ladies come up here and lay your hands on her for Pastor Dale. It's not for her now but for her husband. Now, come on, ladies. Come on, don't be bashful. Come on, Rose. Come on, ladies. Hallelujah. Praying one for another. Come on. Upholding one another. Isn't that what the Word says? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for our pastor. As Lord, as the ladies lay their hand upon his wife tonight, Father, Pastor Teresa, Lord, believe in, Lord, God, that you continue to protect Jimmy and Pastor Dale, Lord, to give them a successful missionary trip, Lord. God, that you'll let them see miracles they've never seen. God, that people will come to know Jesus because of the gospel, Lord, that you paid a huge price for. Lord, let the anointing be heavy upon them. God, in the name of Jesus tonight, Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for a pastor that would go forth and evangelize in a country, gracious God. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody else need prayer tonight? Anybody? Anybody?